I'm glad to, to, to present uh, Dr. George Arum, ex-finance minister of Lebanon, political scientist, historian, economist. Dr. Arum. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's always difficult after a good lunch uh, to speak <laughs> at this time. Uh, and to speak, in fact, to try for me, in my third language, which is English, uh, to assess what are the risks involved for those, institu for those institutions that will come to finance uh, oil and gas developments uh, in Lebanon and its, in its maritime domain. I think uh, I would really like, but I don't see anybody from the regulatory authority here. Uh, yes? <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I would like to uh, identify the, the financing issues that we have to think of in Lebanon, because as was mentioned earlier this morning, uh, given the risks in the Lebanese situation, the cost of financing might be uh, quite substantial. Cost of financing being substantial, this would decrease the flow of revenues uh, coming to the government, especially through income tax. So this is an attempt by somebody who is not an oil expert. Uh, just to brainstorm together to see what uh, we have to, to study in Lebanon to be ready when the negotiations really will come uh, with the uh, operator, prospective operator, and uh, when we will try also to assess what will be the flow of revenues to the government. As you know, the flow of revenues is divided between the royalties, which is very moderate, and between the income tax. There is no product sharing agreement, and there was a lot of critics about the low level of the, ro uh, the royalties, and presently the low level also of income tax. Uh, so we should be quite aware that we have to create the climate that will diminish the cost of the financing, even for the operators, so that uh, everybody uh, would be happy. In fact, the bulk of the financing uh, will go to the oil operators. And here also, in order to, uh, <coughs> to have the best financing cost, I would advise uh, the government and the authority uh, to go to the majors, because if we go to small, unknown company on the market, uh, the cost of their financing uh, might be extremely high. Uh, it's true that we have, the government might have more leverage discussing with small companies than discussing with Total or Enron or Exxon or, uh, uh, or the big uh, seven largest company, but uh, if, if we take the financial issues, uh, certainly, a large oil and gas company uh, can raise money at much cheaper cost that, than small or second rent or, or, uh, that don't have a good uh, credit worthiness. Now, the state might have also some financing burden on its share, and this will depend also on how much we will be anticipated that Lebanon will import from its own fields for the domestic consumption and how much will go to export. To export. Uh, so we need to begin to think about it so that we can identify what will be the infrastructure needed that the state might have to finance. <clears throat> well, okay, this I think I've covered. Yeah, so, um, we can say that the, the financial costs of the operators depend on several factors. The credit worthiness and investment grades of the operating companies themselves, the quality second of business climate in Lebanon, and when I say business climate, it's also uh, 
a transparent uh, business climate framework, uh, uh, formalities being speeded. Uh, well, you know, everybody of, uh, uh, of you knows probably the main indicators that uh, World Bank has done uh, for their uh, business climate index. Uh, the quality of political stability, not only in Lebanon, but in neighboring countries and the creditworthiness of the Lebanese government. I think these are basic elements uh, to be taken into consideration. And of course, again, if the operators have a very high cost of borrowing, uh, then the flow of revenues to the government uh, will be uh, diminished. So the government and the regulatory authority should keep an eye open uh, on, on these issues and on the way even the operators themselves will intend to finance their operation. <clears throat> now, Lebanon is a specific case. I think Mr. Hayat has indicated it very clearly and very politely uh, because <laughs> the uh, specificity of Lebanon is the number of risk factors that exist in the country. Uh, I think, is it here or in the next one? Yes, let us, uh, let us try to identify all the risk. I have put first the political type of risk, uh, delineating the maritime border with neighboring country, and of course uh, with Israel. Uh, this morning, Mr. Amos uh, didn't miss to mention it specifically. Uh, Israel can make our life very difficult, uh, so this is an issue that uh, has to be thought of. Uh, the domestic political instability, uh, constitutional institution uh, not working properly, the parliament, the government, which is also the case now, bad functioning of state institution and incompetent government, or government unable to take decisions, and I mean, it, if you take a lot of time uh, to get a decision from the government, uh, this increases the cost in general, and then this will increase also the cost of the financing. The weak business climate, the continued increase in corruption that has become a national issue now, a very slow decision-making process and action taken by the government. Now, the technical type of risk, uh, what I see, being a non-expert, but the continuing downward trend in international energy prices uh, might be a hindering factor to raise finance. Uh, up to now, I mean, we have a lot of zones where are qualified poor or moderate potential. Uh, I think the picture is not really very clear up to now. Uh, and as long as we don't have we are in the uncertainty about the quantity, of possible quantity of discoveries. Uh, it will be very difficult also, even for the operators to raise finance. The high cost of drilling, of course, under the sea. And I think something and the government should not forget is the environmental risk in case of accident. A big spillover of oil or gas, like it happened in the Gulf of Mexico. And, and here in the Mediterranean area, where uh, uh, bordering countries live on tourism, tourism is extremely important, to have a catastrophe, an environmental catastrophe, constitutes, I think, a risk that has to be taken into consideration. Now, if we look at the present oil sector infrastructure in Lebanon, uh, it's devastating, I mean totally underdeveloped. Even it's not in line with the average GDP per capita in the country. I mean, a few private sector companies, which sometimes you can qualify for being a cartel, uh, which are importing and distributing the local market, in the local market oil, fuel, and gas. No domestic pipelines to distribute gas uh, internally. No refinery, there is this very, very old refinery that uh, has stopped working since half a century, maybe today. Uh, very few storage facilities. No LNG terminal and gas pipelines for export through continental or maritime uh, routes. And 
we have been reminded now that LNG infrastructure facilities uh, cost a lot and needs a lot of money. Uh, the new regulation have not been issued by the government, still incomplete. I mean, some regulation have been issued, but they are incomplete. The national oil company, which existed, has been stipulated in the law, has not yet been created. And one of my uh, proposals in the previous oil and gas conference was to transform the authority, actually, because it has developed a lot of expertise into the national oil company. Uh, because if you create also an additional institution plus the regulatory board, uh, the, this will be costly and then we certainly will have uh, tensions between the two institutions. And the state is already heavily uh, indebted and suffer, suffers from permanent fiscal stress. So we don't want that the financing of what might go to the state as burden to finance the domestic infrastructure would be would increase the fiscal stress. What we are expecting from the development of the oil and gas sector is to decrease the fiscal sector, as I will go back to in a few moments. Now, how to decrease the financial costs of existing risks? As I said, choosing company with a high credit worthiness grade. Uh, solving the issues of maritime border delimitation, developing strong governance and transparency system in the new oil and gas sector, acceleration the completion of the sector institutional framework, and then identifying different future scenario for the export strategy, the domestic infrastructural needs, and the funding of state investment needs, the domestic infrastructure. So, uh, I think that if we want to arrive at a clear picture, uh, presently the regulatory authority should devote uh, a lot of attention uh, to begin to see what will be uh, the, the use, uh, the direction of uh, the, the development of the sector, export totally export-based, or uh, the domestic needs uh, will also be important. Um, there is a lot of work to be done I don't have the impression, but I might be wrong, that there is really a focus actually on, on such issues. Uh, now, of course, a word about the possible role of the Lebanese financial sector. I distinguish the banks and the private investment and private equity firm. Uh, I think the banks uh, which have a lot of liquidity, can easily supply short-term lending facilities to the operators, and eventually for medium-term uh, uh, loans, they can turn to the central bank and even have it subsidized by the central bank, as has been done in the last few years in, in, uh, in billions of dollars. Although I would not support too much <laughs> this. But this is uh, still a possibility in case uh, there is uh, difficulty to find enough financing. Uh, the local or regional MENA and international investment funds could supply equity finance or mezzanine finance, and private equity firms might raise capital for the operating company eventually, or the special companies that will be created uh, by maybe the other company that will have win the contracts uh, just for, for Lebanon, for developing Lebanon. Now, two more, uh, two more slides. One, what the state should not do, and then what the state should do. Uh, so, uh, maybe this is uh, the behavior of a former Minister of Finance. Uh, I would be very much afraid that uh, the state would collateralize uh, its future revenues uh, to increase its debt. Um, I was very much against uh, a law that was passed uh, in 2002, and we tried to have it cancelled by the uh, Constitutional Court that was allowing the state uh, to collateralize uh, its future receipts, especially the custom receipts. 
Uh, and really, I think this will be the biggest mistake that could happen. It, it, it would be a catastrophe. So we have to be alert that this doesn't happen. Yeah. As soon as there will be a discovery and a pro, pro, uh, proven discovery, uh, some seductive banker uh, <laughs> could come to, to the Minister of Finance and say, look, we can uh, make big uh, bond issues with your future revenues collateralized. Uh, as I remember, in my time, I received a lot of distinguished bankers suggesting me this. And of course, I refused it. Uh, of course, should not give its guarantee uh, to operators borrowing. And uh, again, should not securitize, same thing, yeah, uh, except for financing domestic infrastructure needed. I mean, if, and of course, there will be domestic infrastructure needed. So this, one can consider that the state will have to borrow. But I would suggest that the PPP formula, uh, public-private participation, uh, would be more adequate because uh, it will avoid uh, increasing the level of debt to GDP. Uh, the state should not use the flow of revenues to finance the budget deficit when the flow of revenues is coming in, but apply these revenues to a program of debt reduction. Uh, thus lowering the high amount of yearly interest paid by the state on its public debt and thus reducing the budget deficit and thus improving the credit rating of the country, which will diminish the overall risk of developing of the sector. And then last one, what the state and the authority uh, should do, uh, get well acquainted with the market for financing energy operators and various techniques. And, we have to salute uh, the efforts of uh, Mr. Mustafa Assad <laughs> uh, in organizing this conference. I think maybe this is the first time even the subject is being tackled. Uh, develop the capacity to estimate the impact of the finances cost of the operators on the next taxable income. Be able to check that the level and cost of borrowing by the operator we not endanger the Lebanese state flow of tax revenues. Uh, be able also to check that operators do not collateralize an excessive amount of their future production to lenders because if uh, they go to bankruptcy uh, and then uh, the whole production will be seized by, uh, by the lenders and, and Lebanon would be completely deprived of its revenues. And Consult with World Bank and IFC, uh, both of which have developed a well-diversified experience in financing the development of the energy sector and advising state for the sector management. IFC, by the way, has taken a lot of equity participation with lending uh, in many developing countries, and uh, the presence of IFC might attract other uh, lenders. And uh, here again, I know that this the operators would not like it very much, but uh, I believe that as the level of royalties is so low and has been uh, criticized many times, even in this forum, the first and the second forum, uh, I would not be against uh, when there will be the special law for the taxation of uh, the oil operators that we go from 15% to 20%, for instance, of of the income tax or 22%, this has to be research and things off. So I think that, uh, Mr. Zahavi, I saw you now, you have a lot of work to do on all of these issues, and thank you.